So welcome back into Dustin's garage. Um, we're just going to pull the gearbox out of the beetle and uh, see where the noises are coming from and fix the oil leak out of the side. But the story with this is we bought it with uh, a noisy gearbox and the lady had had something done with it. Uh, not really sure what, but she said, oh, I've been told it's okay to drive, but it is noisy. Um, it should have a straight cut first gear anyway, so it may be noisy but it, it kind of sounds like it's missing teeth. I've drained the oil out already and there's no big chunks falling out, but uh, it was also very clean, so it's probably been replaced before and it's got some uh, red silicon around the, the two halves of the gearbox, so uh, someone's probably had it apart before. So we'll whip the rear wheels off, whip the brakes off, uh, drop the rear shocks off down there, and then uh, there's not really much holding the gearbox in after that. Pull the back seat out and remove the uh, gear linkage coupler and we should be good to go. Okay so I figured since the car was already on the ground I might as well take this gear linkage coupler off first and see if I've removed the screw from here already. That uh, gives us access to this guy. There's some lock wire there, we've got to take that off. would probably help. Take that out. Should be able to undo these guys which are, are squares just to be a pain so you can't get a socket on them unless you've got a square socket. This one seems to be super tight. There we go. Oh and the other one's super loose. Look at that. the gear lever and that should come out of there with any luck. Something should come out of somewhere anyway. Alright, there we go, that's loose on there. Alright, we'll get that out of there. I'll have to put the camera down for a sec. Alright, you can see now that the uh, shaft has come out the end of that cupper so we'll go underneath and do what we need to do under there. So, on these beetle hubcaps, uh, if it'll focus, you can see there there's a couple of holes. You can't really get a uh, pry bar or screwdriver or anything in to pry them off. So we've made this handy dandy tool out of a piece of uh, fencing wire. This pops in there and there, and then you can pull. And off comes your hubcap. Then we can go ahead and get the wheel off. So here's another of the uh, joy of older cars. I just pulled that wheel off and had a bit of a look and um, see there's big, nice big rust holes all through there. So it's got a tube in it so it's not actually going to leak but um, as for structural integrity, probably not really very good probably want to throw that one in the scrap so we might have to find another wheel I'll have a good look at all the other ones too while we're there just to um, make sure they're not rusted out as well so that other wheel was in uh, much better condition than the first one thankfully uh, I'll still have to pop the covers off the front ones and have a look but we'll worry about that later so we're going to pull the centre nut out slide the drum off and then in theory we should be able to unbolt the backing plate and just remove uh, the brake line clip there and slide the whole lot off the end keeping it all intact but we'll see how that goes um, if we have to take it off it's not really a problem we've got to bleed the brakes anyway because um, they don't work I don't know why yet there's no brake fluid in there and um, yeah there's no brake fluid in there but I can't see where it's gone but I'm sure we'll find it eventually so we'll uh, get the drums off get the brakes off and carry on Okay, so I've never had the brakes apart on a beetle this old before, but this is cool. Well, maybe it's cool. This thing here is, uh, well, it looks like it's a catch. So if the seal leaks, 
the oil ends up leaking into this and centrifuges to the outside and it's got a tube that runs off there and sits in this here like so comes out that little hole in the drum so any oil that leaks past your uh, your axle seal doesn't get onto your brakes which is neat and someone's had these apart because I didn't write R on there so yeah, that's quite neat but someone may have hit them apart but I don't know what they've done to them because that looks not very good in there and it doesn't seem to uh, seem to move either when I try and move the shoe yeah I never got to the fact we've got to pull this handbrake cable off as well so that's our next thing to do is get that handbrake cable off and out of there and then we'll um, take the clip out of the brake line undo these four bolts and hopefully it'll all just come off nicely so it probably won't but we'll see so it turns out uh, we did have to take the brake line off because there's no no cut in the bracket there and I probably could have taken it off there but it all looks a bit like it's going to break so we'll uh, worry about that when it's out and that's what we're left with this little sleeve comes off I presume that bearing is going to come off somehow but we'll uh, worry about that later on I'm going to take the other side apart and then we'll work on getting it out I've just whipped uh, this side off I don't know whether you'll see this on a camera or not but uh, there's not a lot of lining left in the middle of the shoe but good at the ends and it's adjusted quite far out whereas the other side I've, I've moved these uh, very little or even all the way around and the other side's both even around so I would imagine someone's over adjusted this side to try and compensate um, for the fact that the wheel cylinders are seized on this side as well so uh, both side wheel cylinders are seized so the rear brakes really haven't been doing anything the handbrake will still work because when you pull this lever which is what your cable's pulling it pushes if I can hold the camera so I can actually push it Me mechanically pushes that shoe out you can't really see it there but it does mechanically push that across so that's why your handbrake still works because it's not hydraulic but you'd find if you ran this car over a brake roller the rear brakes would be barely working more than likely if at all but if you take it down the road and uh, do a stop you probably wouldn't notice there was too much wrong with it they might just be a little slack which they were um, but apart from that it'd probably look fine so that's why you really need to use a a brake roller or, or a slip plate tester or something not just a uh, sit it on the seat and race down the road and check the brakes tester because they're not going to tell you whether one end of the car is not working at all or one side or, or you'll know one side because it'll pull but in this case where the two rear wheels aren't working you've probably lost 30% of your braking capacity or maybe more because the engine's in the, in the back um, and you don't even really know it take it in for a check and no one picks it up so make sure that if you're getting brakes tested you get them checked somewhere that's got rollers or slip plates so they can actually tell you whether there's something wrong with them or not okay so this come apart slightly different to the other side uh, everything come out together the the collar the bearing and a little spacer behind it and see what I've done here is I've just sat it all together and popped the zip tie around it left it really loose means you can uh, wash bits while it's still uh, zip tied together and you can also cut through right close to the clip and then use the same tie over and over again for the same thing save you going through hundreds of them every time you uh, pull something apart so our next plan of attack here is going to be to uh, remove these lower shock bolts and undo the bolts that hold them onto uh, the swing arm here and that will un undo the axle tube from the swing arm which is what that lower shock bolt is all mounted to the same piece and um, remove the clutch cable from there 
remove our starter motor wiring. We'll just leave the starter motor attached, I think. And then we'll take the uh, take the belts out of oh, the belts, the bolts out of there, out of the out of the mounts there, and then the two big ones out, and that end piece should come off, and then our gearbox should just come out. In theory, we'll see how good that theory is shortly. Okay, so we've uh, got everything undone as far as I can tell. Uh, there were a couple more um, gearbox mount bolts at the front that we've undone as well. And now I've gone and put this trans jack in the road, you can't see it anyway. Um, but um, yeah, we've put it on the trans jack just conveniently because I happened to uh, borrow one before lockdown and then lockdown happened so it's stuck here with me, which is a real pity. Makes life real easy, but you could easily get it out without one. Uh, let it down to the ground and just put a jack underneath and roll it out. So I'll get this out and uh, get it on the ground. So that's what you're uh, left with at the end of it all, when it's all out. Um, and I said on the ground, but actually what I meant was on the bench, we have a gearbox. So um, I'm going to whip the, the starter off that, whip these axles off. I'm not 100% sure on them yet, but we'll, uh, we'll see. Get that uh, clutch release bearing off and then probably I guess pull that end housing off and see what's in there and then split it in half. So I'll, uh, I'll uh, take some little bits of video along the way and see what we can find. So it turns out the uh, axle tubes come off like that and it looks like that's part of the uh, actual gearbox housing itself. This plastic nylon thing just clips on. And it looks like they use um, the gaskets to set some sort of clearance because there's multiples of them on either side. This one's got one, two, three. And this one had a whole lot, but they all kind of come to pieces. Oh, it had three as well. No, maybe four. Who knows? Anyway, we'll, um, we'll work that out when we're putting it back together. But as for now, we'll uh, carry on. So I've just taken the release bearing off and you can see what makes me think someone's been here before, this uh, lovely orange silicon, everyone's favourite colour. No one should ever use that. Not where you can see it anyway, horrible stuff. Just looks all orange. Um, so we'll uh, carry on. Just thought I'd point out what gave me the inkling that it had been apart before. And it's the same around the rest of the case as well, it's just a bit dirtier. So we've got that rear housing off now, um, you can see the shift rails on this side, so I'm going to roll it once we take these bolts along here out, roll it down on this side so the shift rails are on the top and hopefully the top will just lift off but we'll, uh, we'll see. Now when you're pulling stuff like this apart you obviously got brackets and bits and pieces that need to go back on in the right place in the right way around. I always take some photos like these ones just so um, so you can get them back on the right way the first time around because it's a, a real pain in the butt when you've got a bracket like this which bolts through the case. You put it back in the car and then realise that it's flipped over the wrong way and it doesn't fit. And you've either got to try and get it out in the car or pull, pull something back out. So easy to take a few pictures and have them because sometimes the memory will just fail you. So you can see now we've got the case just um, split all the, way, all the way around, just sitting together at the bottom there, but this part there. So we're just going to gently wiggle that apart, hopefully, and um, then we should be able to see inside. Right, so we uh, got it apart. Um, my guess was off the uh, crown wheel was in the other half of the housing, but it doesn't really matter. I thought it would be uh, in, in this half, but it's in this half. You, you, kind of try and have that half facing down being it's heavy and full of crown wheel um, for getting the engines facing around the wrong way so everything's backwards so we found our problem and it uh, it stems from this here which if that'll focus is first gear and as you can see it's not really very well so you can see what I mean by when I said that was a straight cut gear. That's helical cut ones there. 
So this is your input shaft and it's got four gears on it. And there's your other shaft here. So first gear actually runs on the sleeve. So that's also what you call crash, non synchromesh So the sleeve literally just comes forward and that's it, you're in first gear. Whereas for second gear, it uses the synchro and drive dog of that to engage. So those gears are constantly in mesh. This is not, so it tends to wear the front of these uh, teeth, give them a bit of a beating. And reverse was also noisy, mainly because it's running on that, uh, that gear. But I don't know whether you can get this to focus or not. Nah, maybe not. not. Not close enough. You can see a tiny little hole just in the bottom of that tooth. Same on that tooth. It's just starting to go through the hardening. Which for something this old probably isn't really a drama. So we'll see if we can get some parts. In the, in the meantime we'll put it in the corner. And uh, leave it at that. I was just packing this thing up and uh, set this back in and thought this might be a bit easier way to uh, explain see constant mesh these three gears here are constantly in mesh but they can turn independently because nothing is actually selected whereas first gear is not constantly in mesh so when the input shaft's turning you put your foot on the clutch everything in theory stops and you select first and we've got first gear. Of course when you're moving these shafts are turning, this one's turning at road speed whatever road speed happens to be coming down into first probably not very fast you let your foot off the clutch and this one essentially slows down and this one's still going at road speed so you've got to try and time the two so they can uh, go into gear which is where a lot of this damage happens because people just jam them back in and graunches away and hope for the best but uh, anyway, I thought that might make it a bit clearer. Hope that helps.